Uh, welcome to our honorees tonight, and congratulations to you. And um, so I sort of was charged with giving you a little bit of history, uh, since we are in the Historical Society. And my mission is to give you a little bit of historical background and to share just a few of the important traditions um, that remain with us today that actually originated with Helena students in the public schools. I want you current students to know that regardless of what school you attend, whether it's Capital or Helena High School, this is your legacy equally because this is our community history and it does begin with the first public schoolhouse. Oh, how do I get rid of that thing there? Oh, the thing will go off, will it? Oh, yay. So this was the first public schoolhouse at the corner of Rodney and Broadway. Not anything like the schoolhouses that we go to today, right? When that was torn down, was that controversial? <laughs> um, it may have been a little bit controversial, yes. Yes, it may have been. Um, and one of the first students that went to that school was a, um, a, a little girl by the name of Mary Sheehan. Her married name was Ronan, and she wrote a wonderful, or left us an eloquent memoir that has been published under the title Girl from the Gulches. And among many other things, Mary records her school memories of life uh, and life in Helena when it was just a rough mining camp. And of course, um, this is just for shock value, you know, um, she tells us about how one morning she came to school and she uh, saw the boys all in a cluster pointing down the hill. And as she looked down the hill, she saw a man dangling from the hangman's tree. And that was something that stayed with her for the rest of her life. She tried to get the sound of the creaking of the rope out of her mind, and she could never forget it. It's something that really made an impression on all of those children, I'm sure. It was probably very traumatic. But she tells us, you know, that one of the, one of the uh, things that she remembered about that was the man's wrinkled boots. And that was a detail that, that really <coughs> stayed with her, and she found it very poignant. Well, you know, our community has these vigilante roots, and we can't deny it. And I really think that any community that grows up that way um, ha you know, this makes an impression on us. And this photograph here hung in the halls of Jefferson Elementary School until just a few years ago. I guess as a warning that crime doesn't pay. But, you know, we have raised uh, many generations of law-abiding citizens, so maybe it kind of worked. I don't know. Um, as a community matured and grew, um, and Helena became the territorial capital in 1875. Um, Helena built the first school that actually was graded, had uh, different rooms for the different grades, and that was the first one in the territory of Montana. And Helena built that school because um, it wanted to prove its worthiness, you know, uh, not only as the hub of government, but also as the hub of education. And I think Helena has lived up to that, actually. Um, the cost of this building was $20,000. And it was more than all of the other buildings in the territory school buildings cost at the time. It was a lot, a lot of money. Um, and Central was, as I said, the first graded school. And it served all grades up through grade 12. So it was also a high school. And of course, there was a problem with building it on this very prominent place because that's where city fathers had decided to put the first cemetery. And actually, if you look, um, let's see if I have the cursor here. This is, ah, come over there. Doesn't want to there. This is Central School right here. And back here, right there, you can see little things that look like bales of hay. But those are actually family plots with fences around them. And so the cemetery was actually used for a few years after Central was completed. You know Central as this building here, uh, under quite a lot of scrutiny. Um, it was built in, rebuilt in 1915, and the wings were added in 1921, and this is how it looks today. 
But Central's first graduating class, the first graduating high school class in Helena, um, was the class of 1879, and it included only three, three students, and they were all girls. Um, they chose no step backward as their class motto. And one of these women, um, uh, Mary Wheeler, uh, who is there on the right-hand side, um, really did uh, become a gift to the Helena community. She left Helena uh, when she graduated to study art in Boston and in Paris. She then exhibited her work in New York galleries. And I single her out because um, she returned to Helena, actually, to lead the first art department here in the public schools. And she taught hundreds and hundreds of children to paint and to draw. You can see her work hanging in the hall, in one of the hallways of St. Peter's Hospital today. This is Roger St. Peter, who was a stray dog that, uh, in the original St. Peter's Hospital, which was over on 11th Avenue, uh, the women who volunteered and did the cooking in the kitchen uh, adopted this little mutt here. And um, it's a really wonderful portrait. Next time you uh, are unfortunate enough to have to go to the hospital, take a look at the, at the wonderful painting by Mary Wheeler. So the first separate high school, separate from um, the grade school, was completed in 1893 next door to Central School. And certainly there are stellar examples of, of academic excellence among thousands and thousands of Helena students that we could, um, we could talk about. But rather, I would like to not talk about individual achievements, but my focus here is community involvement and the legacies of students sort of as groups uh, and how they have, what they have left us and how they have shaped and changed the Helena community. Since the late 1800s, both boys and girls, um, high school sports, football, basketball, track, have energized and really inspired the, um, the community. And um, it's kind of funny because in 1925, um, as many, many, many Hellenans were ready to board the trains to travel to Bozeman to, um, to watch the, uh, the game for the state championship that year, the basketball championship, the Helena newspaper published a series of cheers. And it said um, in, in this uh, little article that these cheers were for the boosters and that you should be sure to cut them out and take them with you so that you would you know, be able to, to cheer um, Helena on. And some of those cheers were kind of funny and one of them went, mouth like an alligator, teeth like a saw, Helena, Helena, raw, raw, raw. But it wasn't <laughs> R-A-H raw, it was R-A-W raw. <laughs> Unfortunately, Butte won the uh, tournament or the state title that year, but win or lose, even today, the spirit of both your programs, uh, both schools, basketball, football, track, boys and girls, um, is an important tradition that touches and often inspires the uh, Helena community. Helena is a cultural hub. And the arts have always played an important roles in our schools and not only have music and, um, and art, uh, students consistently displayed their talents in a wide variety of venues. But theater also um, you know, has been important to the Helena community and to students. And I think stu theater students were uh, a very passionate thread that carries through to the present day today. It's fair to say, I think, under the direction of Helena High School drama teacher Doris Marshall, who taught from 1947 to 1968, um, many high school students um, have consistently and passionately participated and contributed to productions, not only in their schools, but also in community theater. This was the Brewery Theater. It was founded uh, by Doris Marshall and her husband in 1954 and uh, stage productions that included Helena Youth from the very beginning, from 1954, <coughs> until the building was demolished in 1972, uh, to the, you know, everyone mourned the loss of, of that building. But um, a couple of years later, 1975, Grand Street Theater was, for, was founded, and that continues to include Helena Public School students of all ages, 
again, whose consistent contributions have really helped make it one of the most successful community theaters in the Northwest. So around the, 20th, the turn of the 20th century, high school students started uh, a tradition called the, G the Senior Junior Fight. And maybe you've heard about this. It was bloody and it was destructive. And the object of it was for the juniors to take down and desecrate the senior flag, which the seniors would run up the flagpole that you can see there in the, in the photograph in the front of the school. And um, so uh, this became more and more and more actually very destructive and dangerous. And finally, in 1924, um, students and administrators sort of planted the seeds that became the vigilante parade. What happened was, instead of using the flagpole, students began to use the roof of the high school and the, the spike that you can see there, and that became the flagpole. And it really did become a very, very dangerous undertaking to try to take the, well, to put the flag up, first of all, and then to take it down. So um, anyway, students and administrators got together to try to find some alternative uh, activity and, and nothing really worked but then they hit upon the idea of the vigilante parade and as you know um, that is a grand pageant of historical floats that involves students in creative competition and it is a, a unique way unique across the country to uh, a unique way to usher in spring so um, former high school Helena High School um, principal A.J. Roberts said in 1939, and I quote, this parade so little thought of at the time and then only as a splendid substitute for lawless activities has more than any other institution distinguished the city of Helena and its high school. And that continues today, as you all know. In 1935, um, this was 1934 was the last year that this Helena High School was used. And in 1935, students moved to a new high school, which is now the Helena Middle School. It was just, um, just a couple of weeks before a series of earthquakes um, rendered the building uninhabitable. And you probably recognize that as the foyer for those of you that might have gone to Helena Middle School. Um, students took it all in stride and they attended classes in rail cars that were donated by the Great Northern Railway. The repa repairs took two years and finally um, uh, the students returned to the school after it was, after it was extensively um, repaired and rebuilt. Um, and then in 1952, this may be a familiar uh, painting for you. This is the Four Georgians, but actually the title of the of the painting is July 14th, 1864, and it is by Irvin Shorty Shope, uh, painted in 1952. Um, this painting now hangs at the Helena Regional Airport, but it was in, unveiled in the hall of the former high school of the Helena, uh, which is now Helena Middle School, where it actually hung until fairly recently. Um, the Helena High School class of 1953 sold pickles and maple bars to raise $1,000 to commission the artist to paint this, this uh, painting that has uh, increased in value and is now worth thousands and thousands of dollars. And it has become a real community icon because, of course, and it's appropriate for our 150th too because this, after all, is the Four Georgians. Um, it is still owned by the class of 1953 and it is on loan to the, uh, to the airport. So, but a couple of years, so that painting was unveiled in 1952, and a few years later, in 1955, the current Helena High School um, was completed, and the former Helena High School became the middle, actually became the junior high at that time. And um, a few years after that, um, the student body split. Capitol High School, which was originally built in the 1960s, uh, or I guess 1953, I'm not real sure about that date, but it was built as a uh, Catholic Central High School and closed in 1969, and then the Helena uh, School District bought the building and opened it as Capitol High School in 1973. 
So it has a very interesting history. And I, I, I think it's worth mentioning, too, that um, for several decades after Capitol was, um, was opened, um, Capitol students actually indirectly helped really greatly in caring for the Home of Peace, which is the oldest active Jewish cemetery in Montana. And it backs up right to the uh, parking lot of Capitol High School. The school district um, leased the land outside the, the fence here, and that became the practice football field. And that is where the first graves, uh, the first people were buried. And they were never, those graves were never marked, but they're still buried there. And it's really interesting because had the school district not leased this land, it would have just gone back to nature and everyone would have forgotten that there were actually graves there. So by using it as a practice football field, it really did help preserve and manicure part of the cemetery. Uh, public school children have always acknowledged Arbor Day as they are here in 1898, as you see in the photograph. Well, in 1899, the next year, the students um, in Helena, across Helena, in all the public schools, faced a very formidable task. A lightning, spiked, a lightning sparked fire had left the slopes of Mount Helena blackened uh, and, and burned, and it was sort of very depressing and looming over town. And so on that Arbor Day in 1899, children from all of the Helena public schools, each carrying a bucket of seedlings and an orange for a snack, hiked up and down the slopes of Mount Helena, planting hundreds of trees. And young violinist Fred Kufall, who was also a student of Helena High School at the time, accompanied the children playing beautiful music as they dug holes all day long. This very first attempt at reforestation uh, is a gift that those children gave to the community. And the old growth is still visible along the slopes there. And um, it is uh, something that we even enjoy today and see, you know, see daily. So in 2012, when Central Teacher Nancy Robinson retired, children reenacted that long ago march up the slopes serenaded by a young violinist. They dug holes and planted trees. And in this way, um, and in many other ways, children are still contributing to our community, and they do make a difference. Thank you.